Many years ago, I heard, I heard something that was so moving. Many years ago. I'm about to date myself now. But uh, at the time this writing was made, I was, uh, or this speech was made, I was 12 years old. And a fellow by the name of Paul Harvey. Anybody ever listen to Paul Harvey? Paul Harvey. Now, if you've been listening to Paul Harvey, you just dated yourself because Paul Harvey was way back when. And Paul Harvey could tell you the rest of the story. Amen? But Paul Harvey, between him and Jesus, gives me what I'm going to preach today. And uh, I went back and I pulled it up a few days ago. I pulled it up and I, I listened to it. I found it on YouTube. I found it in written form. And uh, so I, I just pulled it up and I've, I've listened to it probably four or five times at least. And so today before, and before I preach and say anything to you at all, I will tell you that my text today is the same text that Paul Harvey took. He wasn't an apostolic preacher. He wasn't a prophet. I don't know what religion he even was. But I know he was a great commentator. And everybody liked to listen back in the day to Paul Harvey because he was just to the point. But something must have had a hold of him in 1965 when he made this speech and I don't know if it's the full speech but it is an excerpt it's about three minutes long but I want you to hear what Paul Harvey had to say in 1965 because today I'm going to preach to you if I were the devil if I were the devil if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. 
and thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. 1965. I would almost feel that Paul Harvey had a spirit of prophecy on him because everything that you just saw has already come to pass. We are living in an overwhelming time. These are days that we have not encountered before. I probably will make some of you mad today, but I'm going to be scriptural, and if you get mad at scripture, you'll get over it or you'll be lost. So I'm just going to talk to you about the enemy today. The enemy is not a political party. The enemy is not somebody that disagrees with you. The enemy is the devil. He's your adversary. And let me just tell you that he is out to do everything he can to cause you to be lost. He'll take whatever measure he can take to cause you to go to hell. There really is a heaven, and there really is a hell. And every one of us, whether we want to admit it or not, are headed to one of those places. And so what has been set up, I, when, I, when I saw this and I, I heard this, the things that he said that just were beginning to come to pass, how that prayer would be removed from the school, the Bible would be removed from the school, how that God would be removed from the system. Did you notice last week, did you notice when the Pledge of Allegiance was said that they did not say under God anymore several times? Under God has been taken out of the pledge by some. You say, oh, pastor, there's nothing to that. Oh, yes, it is. I've come to tell you today that if I were the devil, I'd do exactly what he's doing right now. I'd take control of the Internet, and it would become the downfall of more than you can imagine. I would take control of the Internet and put filth and pornography what could be used and will be used and is used as sometime educational. Be careful now because what schools are about to do is give your kid a computer and teach them at home. Be sure they don't punch the wrong button and go to the wrong site. Mom and dad, I don't care what you say about me today. I'll be a little old-fashioned today, but we need somebody to stand in the gap and say, you can't do some things and be right with God. If I were the devil, I'd take control of that laptop or that tablet or that computer, and I would control the filth and the degradation and the sin that comes across it. Let me tell you, and I said this when my dad was alive. We discussed it many times. Did dad preach this message one time? I thought he did. If I were the devil, I don't know what he preached. I don't have his notes. But I'm going to preach like GE this morning and tell you right now that we are standing in times we've never encountered before. Somebody's got to say it, and so I'm going to say it. If I were the devil, I would infiltrate television. I told him what I started to tell you. I told him many times over the last few years, Dad, if, 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 people, if people can't watch television, then they sure can't have a computer. My dad wasn't a computer age guy. He kept saying about the last 15 years of his life, I'm going to go take some courses and learn that computer. He never took the courses. I don't know that he ever got on a computer. But I said, Dad, the filth, the filth, that one button you can punch and be on on the internet 
far subsides what a television will ever show you. But if I were the devil, I'd infiltrate television. I'd put on their vile language so your children could hear. I'd put immorality on there to convince you that since everybody else is doing it, it's okay. I'd show you where gays were married. I'd show you men kissing men and women kissing women on television. And that's what's happening in America. But if that's what the, if, if I were the devil, that's exactly what I'd be doing in 2020. Oh, it's going to get quiet. I know it is. I don't care. I don't care. If I was the devil, I'd convince the world it's okay to live together and not be married. That's what I'd do. I'd say everybody else is doing it. It's not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to tell you it's still a problem. I've come to tell you that marriage is sacred. I've come to tell you that the scriptures say there's a man and a woman, not a man and a man or a woman and a woman, but a man and a woman, and that's only for life. Somebody say hallelujah. Ah, if you're here today and you're disagreeing, I challenge you to prove me wrong by the word of God. I could convince the world that everything is all right. It's okay because such and such is doing it. It's okay because Hollywood's doing it. It's okay because my friends are doing it. I want to tell you I love people that are, that are still wrong, but I do not condone your sin. I'm going to put my arms around you if you come to this church and tell you how much I love you, but I'm not going to condone wrong. I've come today as an apostolic one God, Jesus name preacher to tell you that the enemy is on our trail. He's doing everything within his power to destroy the church in the very last days of time. Have you watched God's calendar lately? Have you seen what's happening in the world lately? That peace treaty signed a few days ago ladies and gentlemen was not an accident that was prophecy being fulfilled and we are standing on the brink of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to rapture the church out of the world somebody shout hallelujah come on if you believe me help me preach here today Help me preach here. I'm telling you, I, I, I saw something the other day that it triggered in my mind. We talk about the second coming of the Lord. Let me, let me make something very clear to you. The rapture of the church is one thing. The second coming of the Lord is something else. See, some of you didn't know that. But the rapture is when the trump of God sounds and we who have been born of water and spirit are caught up together to meet him in the air. That's the catching away of the bride of Christ. The rapture, nobody knows when it's gonna be. The rapture, it could happen this very day. It could happen while I'm preaching. The rapture is near at hand. But here's what the second coming of the Lord is. At the end of the great tribulation, the rapture has taken place. The church is out of here. The Antichrist is ruling and reigning. The vows of wrath have been poured out. But all of a sudden, Jesus Christ is coming again. And he's coming in riding with his saints uh, with a sword in his mouth and on a white horse. And he's going to conquer the Antichrist and take care of business upon this earth. I'm looking for the rapture and I want to come back with him in the second coming. Just thought I'd throw that in. That didn't cost you anything extra. If I was the devil, I'd make church a secondary thing in people's life. I'd put everything before church. I had a, a man this week sit in my office that's an astute man in this area. As a matter of fact, he's a man that serves on the court of appeals. He's a judge. And he come to see me this week. And he was in my office and we were talking. And matter of fact, there was two judges there. One of them was a former Supreme Court judge and the other one is running for Supreme Court. And so they came to see me and they said in my office, but you know, we got talking and, and, he, and he's not a Pentecostal. He, he's not of our faith. But he said, Pastor, you know what bothers me? Used to. They wouldn't schedule a ball game on a Wednesday night. The, the schools would honor the people that went to church. You ain't gonna like me, but I'm gonna tell you, if I was the devil, I'd have ball games, 
I'd have parties. I'd have every sport. I'd have everything I could have on a Wednesday to keep people from going to the house of God and people from hearing the word of God. You see, it's not that important. Oh, yes, it is. Would you take a look over your shoulder what has happened to our generation? I've lived long enough to tell you that what we tolerate now becomes law to the next generation. And we better put some value on the kingdom and the house of God because the house of God is where we get our spiritual food. If you're joining me today on the internet, stay tuned. I'm not near about through. But if I was the devil, I'd make church not so important. I'd just say, don't worry about it tonight. Never, you've heard me say this a hundred times. Never did I get up on a Sunday morning and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, are we going to church today? I never on a Wednesday night said, do we have to go tonight? There was no question. But if I was the devil, I'd make that not important. I'd teach my kids that. You don't have to say it to them. All you got to do is stay home with them. All you got to do is take them somewhere else. You don't have to say it to them. Church is not important to me anymore. It's just not as important as it used to be. Let me tell you, the way we got to where we are is because somebody thought it was important. Don't you let the devil lie to you. Don't you let the devil speak his untruth into your mind and your spirit. You know what I'd do? If I was the devil, I'd make people feel good about staying away from church and just watching service online. We had all kind of excuses, don't we? Somebody told me not long ago, I could get used to this pandemic, sitting at home, watching you, drinking my coffee in my pajamas. Makes me want to turn that outfit off. If it wasn't for some good that it done, I would. Just for about six months to get some of you back to the house of God. I told you you weren't going to like me, but don't you think it's not a trick of the devil? Let me tell you what the devil does. He'll, and I'm not talking to people that are avoiding the virus and people that are sincere and trying to, trying to avoid being sick. I'm not, I'm not talking about people with conditions. Please, look, the, my notes, I marked that. I highlighted that so I'd be sure you understand that I'm not criticizing that. I know we're in a rough time. I'm talking about people that do it often and only. And the only thing they do, well, we watch it online. The Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, get your hide to church because it's a trick of the devil to convince you that it's okay to sit at home. Ain't no screen going to be as spiritual as what we feel here this morning. I love you, but that's the truth. If I was the devil, I'd convince you that faithfulness was no longer necessary. You don't have to be faithful anymore. You don't have to do all that. That's old school, preacher. Well, I just happened to be old school then because I'm going to tell you the Bible said it is required of a steward to be found faithful. You got to be faithful to God. You got to be faithful in your money. You got to be faithful in your prayer. You got to be faithful in your in your love for God. You can't just treat God like a secondary source in your in your life. He's not the emergency room. He's the whole hospital. Well, we may not have this big crowd next week. If I was if I was the devil, I'd get people so busy they wouldn't have time to pray. I'd make sure they worked two or three jobs. and When they got home, they had plenty to do. I wouldn't let them have any time to pray. If I was the devil, I'd occupy their time, make sure they didn't have any time to pray. I'd make sure that none of them could read the Bible. They'd take time to read the Bible. If I was the devil, I'd, I'd cause all things to break in the house and do everything I could to the car and make the children sick. I'd do whatever I could because he sure doesn't want you taking the scriptures literally anymore. I am. Just hang on. If I was the devil, I'd inject into the heart of young people that it's okay to have abortions now. That's murder. 
get quiet if you want to. I don't go on Facebook and, and, and create my cause because I don't want to be offensive to people. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect this pulpit. And I'm going to tell you the truth in this pulpit. And I want to tell you right now that if you think abortion is all right, you need to go pray and you need to get in the Bible because abortion is murder. That's taking lives and that's a sin. Well, everybody's doing it now, pastor. They don't make it right. The scripture said we cannot judge ourselves by ourselves. You can't look at somebody else and say, well, they're doing it. I want to tell you the gates hadn't clicked behind their heels yet either. Am I doing okay? Y'all still with me? Anybody going to leave me? See you later. I'm going to preach. I'm not here to play today. If I was the devil, I'd make the church believe that homosexuality and lesbianism is accepted and it's no longer a sin. You know what it is now to the world? It's a lifestyle. It's, we were born this way. That's hogwash. You wasn't born that way. If God made you a man, be a man. If God made you a woman, be a woman. Do I hate them? No, I love them, but I hate sin. And that's a sin. That's what got Sodom and Gomorrah in trouble. That's why even in our law, it's called sodomy. Because Sodom and Gomorrah turned to their wicked ways. Man with man, woman to woman. I'll tell you what they did in the Old Testament. They killed them. But thank God for the blood of Jesus who can wash people's sins away. Thank God that he forgives all that lifestyle and he'll bring you into the blood of Christ and you can walk out a new creature. You don't have to be the way you are. You don't have to live that way. But if I was the devil, I'd convince you that was okay. I'd even show you politicians that were that way. I'd even show you some people in great renown that were marrying people that way. I feel about as bold as a lion here today. I feel, I feel like God is on my side. Because let me tell you, if I was the devil, that's what I'd do, and that's what he's doing to our world. He's ejected into the minds of our kids. Kids, listen to me. There's an old-fashioned gospel. There's an old-fashioned way. There's a right way to live. There's something you got to live by. You can't throw everything out the window. You can't live just any old way you want to. There is a way to live, and the devil wants you to believe otherwise. But I'm here to preach to you, it don't work that way. I'm so glad God didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. Man, wouldn't this world be a a crazy, boring world with a bunch of men? Thank God for women. I don't care what you say. God made it that way. I'm not being a smart aleck this morning. But you see... When you can, when, and I get all, look, let me tell you something. People must think I don't read. They must think I don't know. Because every day my computer is flooded, flooded with videos and sayings. And, and it's okay. It's okay. But let me tell you something. When you see people that are, that are vying for, for any kind of office and, 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 and they're, they stand publicly and tell you they're for certain things. You better be careful. I don't care who they are. If I was the devil, I'd make suicide popular. If I was the devil, I'd infiltrate young men and old men alike, women, boys and girls with drugs like the world has never seen drugs in the workplace drugs on the street prescription drugs and then all the others it would probably shock us today to see how much drugs is in our world how many people doctors lawyers people of renown 
doing drugs. He said, oh, no, that's not really happening. You better get your head out of the sand. It's happening all around us. If I was the devil, I'd infiltrate that because it's hard to judge against something that, that's got you. <laughs> if I was the devil, I'd, I'd make kids see that suicide is important and popular and, 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 and suicide by groups, and, and it happens every day. Did you know it's one of the leading causes of death in America now? Suicide. Why? Why? Why would anybody want to take their life? I'll tell you why. Because the demons of hell get inside their mind and their brain and start working on them. And let me tell you, the devil is after every soul he could get. You're not, you're not really that important to the devil. You're just a pawn in everything that he can do to destroy anybody that might be interested in the kingdom of God. He's coming against them. If I were the devil, I'd make it popular. I'd make drugs popular. I'll tell you what else I'd do. If I was the devil, I'd sow discord among the brethren. I'd cause people to not like one another. I'd cause people to have harsh words with one another. Let me tell you, there's seven things God hates. You ready? There's seven things that God hates. And the Bible said one of them was sowing discord among the brethren. God hates troublemakers. I don't know if y'all having fun, but I am. If we have no discard, we have revival. The house divided against itself cannot stand. I don't know that we do in this church. I hope to God we don't. But let me tell you, if you got all against your brother, I'll tell you what I did this week. I heard there was a fellow that said something about me about, oh, I don't know, a few months ago. I just ignored it. I, th- I said, you know what, I just, I'm not going to pay no attention to that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even give it hardly a second thought. But then I heard it again this past week. So, ODG just got in his truck, cranked her up, didn't tell nobody where I was going, headed for his place of business. That's exactly right. Scripture said if you, have, if, you, if you know that your brother have all against you, go to him. So I pulled up to his place of business, and it was probably God. It was probably God because I was mad. It was probably God. But there's a big sign on his door. It's closed right now. And I said, thank you, Lord. I pulled off, but I'm going back. I'm going to tell you that right now. I've had time to think about it. I, I got, I'm going back. But you know what? There shouldn't be discord among the brethren. There's revival where there's no discord. There's a move of the Holy Ghost where there's no discord. You see, if I was the devil, I was convinced this generation that what we just did in this church is not necessary anymore. You don't have to do that anymore. We're too, we're too affluent to do that anymore. No more praise and worship. No more acting like we, you know what? I wish somebody would have an ax chapter 2 fit. I wish somebody would have an Acts chapter 2 experience. I will tell you something. It got so bad in Acts chapter 2 that the Bible said they thought those looking on thought they were drunk. In so much that Peter had to stand up and say, they're not drunk like you think they are. These are not drunken like you suppose. He didn't say they were not drunk. He just said they're not drunk like you think they are. Brother, they had a taste of Holy Ghost wine. I wish somebody would have an Acts chapter 2 experience. I wish somebody would let your praise reach the throne of God. I wish somebody would worship him because it's the devil's business to stop our worship and to stop our praise. That's why I'm going to keep dancing before the Lord. I will keep praising God. I will keep preaching true. I will keep hanging on to the word of God because the devil don't like that. You start preaching what I preached last Sunday, I want to tell you the devil gets nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. He can't stand it. You start talking about the name of Jesus, all his little imps get up and run out of here. You start talking about the power of the word of God, and I want to tell you they flee. Why? Because there's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout Hallelujah. I'm trying to hurry. If I was the devil, I'd convince people that holiness wasn't necessary anymore. That went over like a lead balloon. 
Some of you are afraid of what I'm fixing to say. I'm going to fool you. Holiness starts right in here. And you can't be holy without the Holy Ghost. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you get a Holy Spirit. And when you get the Holy Spirit, you have a right spirit. The spirit of a man, the Bible said, is the candle of the Lord. And he starts to shine in your life. And it comes from the inside out. I want to tell you, we need some old-fashioned holiness preaching. Not, I'm not talking about I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I'm not talking just about the way you dress. I'm not talking just about the way you look. I don't. That's not what I'm talking about. How in the world can you say you're holy and the bitter water and sweet water can't come out of the same well? In the book, holiness is a spirit. It changes you not from the outside in but from the inside out. If you think you can change from the outside in, you got a wrong, wrong conclusion. You take an old hog and wash him up, clean him up, perfume him up, put a ribbon between his ears, set him up in the living room in the recliner. You turn your head, he's out the back door and he's back in the mud. You can take the, hog, the mud out of the hog, but you can't take the hog out of the mud. Because that's in his nature. What's got to happen to people is a nature's got to change. And the nature changes where the Holy Ghost comes in. The devil would like for you to think there's no reason to have the Holy Ghost in your life. The devil would like for you to think there's no reason to have any holiness in your life. If I was the devil, I'd convince you that was just old school and we don't need to do that anymore. Wow. I tell you, I hate to disappoint you, but I got 17 minutes left. I'm not going to use them all, but here's what I want to tell you. I got to thinking about it. If I was the devil, I'd do everything I could to convince people that holiness was no longer necessary. And I'll go even further. If I was the devil, I'd try to convince people that it doesn't matter how you look at all. Could I tell you something? You're, some of you may be in this church for the very first time. I'm going to be honest with you today, okay? Here's what I preach. I preach modesty and moderation and morality. Those are the three M's of righteousness. If you get modest and if you get morally right and you do things in moderation, I believe you're going to be pleasing to God. That's what I believe. I'm not a clothesline preacher. I don't mind telling you that. I, you, if you've been around long, you know that. I want to tell you, there's some things that you can't wear because they're immodest. There's some of y'all, if they, if they stuck a pin in some of that stuff you wear, it would, you, you would blow up. You would explode. You leave nothing to the imagination. So, well, that don't really matter. Oh, really? Why did Jesus say, sir, if you look up on a woman? He said, man. He didn't say nothing about a woman. You men ain't nothing to look at. Let's get that right out. No. But he said, if a woman, if you lust after a woman, what did he say? You've already committed adultery in your heart. So some people wear things that are seductive and then don't want men to look. I'm going to tell you, man's got... <laughs> I'm loving this. Some of you are as uneasy. Is he really going to say it? Yep, he's about to say it. He's about to say it. Man's got red blood running through his veins. He's got a spirit in him that when you walk by in a seductive way, he's looking. I had an old guy stand up years ago, not this church, another church that I pastored, Sandy Lake. Old man stood up. He said, brother, I got it figured out. He was an old man. He was honest. He said, I got it figured out. I said, what is it, Brother Lewis? He said, I'll tell you what it is. You, you just can't look that second time. That's a thought. That second look will get you. Now, we're all laughing, but we all know it's true. When you wear things that are exposing, when you wear things that are improper, when you, look, there's a lady that wrote a book and she's not a Pentecostal. She's a different denomination. She wrote a book that says your clothes say it for you. Let me tell you, you can't dress like a Bourbon Street whore and expect people to think 
that you're a child of God. I didn't know I was going to say all this. Sometimes we need it. If you're watching by way of the internet, please don't forgive me because I'm not sorry. We need some standards. You need personal standards in your life. You need to have some lines drawn in your life. You need to have some personal convictions in your life. There's some things that might be wrong for you that's not wrong for somebody else. There's some of the things that you might be able to do that somebody else can do or can't do. Don't push your personal convictions on everybody else. Don't tell everybody they're going to hell because they don't act like you act. Don't live one way and say, if everybody don't live like me, they're all lost. That's not true. Hmm. If I was the devil, Paul, you were on it in 1965. Mr. Harvey, you had it. If I was the devil, one of my biggest weapons would be social media. I'd make it look so innocent, and yet I would warp and change the minds of millions of people and change the principle of Scripture by just simply putting it there every day for people to read. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, I'd do exactly what the devil's doing in our generation. He's doing it now. How many years later, 35 and 20, 55 years ago, Paul Harvey called the shot that's happening today. And here we are in 2020, and it's worse now than it was then. Which Can, can you help me? even fathom what it would be like if prayer were still in our school? If we had prayer every morning like we did when I was a kid? If we stood and said the Pledge of Allegiance and didn't leave under God out? If we still had patriotism where we all put our hand over our chest and said the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of America? I'm going to say this. I'm fixing to skull. Somebody make them mad at me, but I love you. But the, you got a right to your opinion. You think anything you want to. But if you don't love this country and this nation long, enough to honor the flag of this nation, you ought to get your hide up and buy you a plane ticket and get out of here today. You ought to leave here now. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is America. This is what we love. There's no place on earth like this place. I'm telling you the truth. I, I know I'm on dangerous ground because of all the junk that's out there that you're hearing. But I'm just telling you, I, you got a right to an opinion. Go post anything you want to post. Say anything you want to say. But when I'm here, I'm just going to tell you. I'm not posting that. I'm not fighting with the world. I'm not going to get in a Facebook scrap. I'm not going to get in a social media war. I'm not going to do that. But when I'm in this pulpit, I'm going to tell you, we are Christians and we got to follow Christian principles and we got to stay with Christian values and we got to do the right thing. We cannot okay what the world is okaying. We cannot turn our head and act like it's not happening. We can't say, oh yeah, well it's all right. It's okay. No, we can't because we are going to stand before God all it takes, all it takes for evil to prevail is for good people to remain silent. Maybe you might need to go crank my truck and let me get out of here in a hurry. Stand all over the house. If I were the devil, I'd do exactly what I'm doing right now. I'd cause you in your little spirit to swell up say he has no right saying that yes I do because I'm still in the scriptures now I'm not in the scripture about the flag that's a patriotism thing I'll give you that but I want to tell you something I, I got a right to an opinion and this is my opinion if you don't love America leave it
I won't be watching one NBA game. I won't be watching one NFL game. And anybody else that kneels, I won't go to a high school game or a college game if they're kneeling and don't honor the flag. I love America. <laughs> it's all on tape. You can go get it and listen to it a second time. It's on video or DVD and CD and whatever else. It'll be online if you want to search it again this evening and say, did he really say that? I'm not backing up from one thing I've said today because the enemy is trying to destroy not only you and I, but our marriages, our families, our finances. Let me, if you don't think the devil is right at the bottom of this pandemic, something's wrong with you. If you don't think that he's doing everything he can and using everything he can to destroy America and your life with this pandemic, you're wrong. It's of an evil thing. But God is still on the throne. And he's going to take care of it all. This may be my last sermon. Who knows? Maybe the last time I ever preached, but here's my last scripture to you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. That means get serious. Get serious about this. Be vigilant. Be on the watch. Look, look, look. Let me tell you something. Don't be doing things just to fight with people. Do things out of good moral character. Do things because you love God and love conservative values. Do things. I love every one of you, but I want to tell you the devil's after you. The devil's after you. I feel sometime like the old woman that stood up to testify years ago. She said the devil chased me around the stump. Thought he'd catch me ever jump. Bless his holy name. Devil's after you. You better wake up every morning and know the devil's after you. You better go to bed every night and know, know the devil's after you. He's trying to control your mind. He's trying to control your values. He's trying to control your heart. He wants to do everything he can to destroy your family. He is not for marriage. He is not for family. He is not for anything that God put in place. He is against everything God ever started. That's what the devil is against. It's not about you. He's been fighting with God ever since he got thrown out of heaven because the Lord kicked him out. He was rebellious. So what I'm telling you today, it's not about us. It's about a war. And you just have to be in the middle of the war. Lord, I pray for our church. I pray for our people. I pray the Holy Ghost would come on our minds. I pray, God, that you would get a hold of us. God, we could care less about politics today, but we care about everyday life. And we care about values and we care about what we were taught and where we came from. My granddad and my, my grandmother and my mother and my father. And for generations, Lord, we've been taught this. We don't want to lose it. I defy every spirit of hell. I come against the enemy on this Sunday morning. I come against the devil. You said, Lord, if we resist him, he will flee from us. We resist those spirits today. We come against everything that the devil is trying to throw in our path. I claim victory in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are here today and the devil has attacked their mind, I pray God that you would deliver them from evil in Jesus' name today. I pray God for every soul in this building that the spirit and the power of God would overshadow and consume us that we might know you like we've never known you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Put your hands up all over this room. Let's give God praise today. Hallelujah. 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 
Aleluia. 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 All over this room, I feel the presence of the Lord here today. I feel the Spirit. How many of you want your family saved? You want your kids saved? You want to be saved today all over this room? Hold your hand up. I want to go to heaven, preacher. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to fall into the devil's traps. I don't want to be lost. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Let me be a holy place. Let me be a place where you abide today. I just feel the presence of God. I wish it was where I could give an altar call, but we're not there yet. I'm trying to do right. But let me tell you right where you are, let the Holy Spirit of God speak to you. Because what I preach to you today are the things that we are facing, not just today, every day of our lives. And people, listen to me, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true and with thanksgiving I will be a Sanctuary for you. I want to be a place where you can abide, God. I want to be a place where you can live. I want to be a place that you're happy in my house, in my body, in my mind, in my soul. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Sing it early. Tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I want to be a living. I will be a living you. How many of you want to be a place where God abides, where the Lord is at home in your life? Come on, lift your hands all over this house and sing it. Oh, Lord, prepare me just to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true And with thanksgiving, I will be a I hate preaching in the dark, but I'd rather preach in the dark than not preach. I love you. So good to see all of you. To our guests today, I don't know if I get to meet you, but if I don't, thank you for coming. Bill and Sharon, I see you today. I love you so much. The Rices, love you. Paul, your family, beautiful family. I see you. I see you, girl. God bless you today. Thank you for being with us. I hope I haven't hurt your feelings, but if I have, it's because the word of the Lord cuts deep. I will not apologize for one word that I've said today. I will only tell you that if I were the devil, I'd be doing just what he's doing right now. And the things that I have preached today are the things that he's doing. Get some place and have a talk with God. Everything is going to be all right. God bless you.